happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome to a live stream. We are going to continue on where we left off on Saturday, which was uh, starting the construction of a granny square sweater or a cardigan. We kind of talked about sweaters and cardigans. Um, this one's going to be a cardigan. It has been affectionately named the booby cardigan. Long story there, and if you're not up to speed, you can watch the previous live stream to find out what that's all about. Um, but we did figure on a uh, layout. Um, I've counted up my squares. We went through measurements and materials and the whole thing on Saturday. So today I'm actually going to start joining my squares together. We'll talk a little bit more about layout um, and we'll talk about the different ways you can join your squares and why you might want to opt for one method over another. And um, we will just get into it. Mr. and Stitches is here. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, all right, just to recap, I have my measurements here um, and I've got some information on the granny squares and how much uh, material you can figure out how much you need based on um, one of two ways. You can start with your measurements and work backwards and figure out how many squares you need, or you can do what I did and I had a pile of 10 granny squares and I'm going to build a, uh, a sweater based on those squares. So I'm going to eke out a square from my, uh, or I should say eke out a, a sweater from the squares that I already have. I whipped up a quick little sketch of what I was thinking. So if I was going to do sweater, it was going to look something like this. There would have been nine squares on the front and the back because I'm using six inch squares and they fit into three across front and back based on my measurements, um, or the cardigan uh, style, which is the back is the same. So there's nine squares in the back, but then there's only a panel of three on either side and then an opening in the middle into which we will be creating some edging. So that will help fill in the gap in the front. I'll add some buttons and uh, we will be getting to that down the road. But today we're gonna talk about joining and I'm just gonna quickly sketch a mock-up of how it looks when it's laid flat. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to say that I was chit-chatting with Shell after the live stream on Saturday and she has a vlog from November of last year where she was actually working on a granny square cardigan and she's got some tips and tricks as well as layout for granny square cardigans for larger sizes. Um, I'm kind of built like a pole so <laughs> Uh, so if you've got any nice shaping to you, then you might find some of her tips and tricks on shaping your granny square cardigan or sweater uh, to fit your curves better, really helpful. And we will link to her vlog in our description box. Um, I'll make sure it's in there once this video is done. And we'll probably put included in a little community post too. So that's Shell. She also says in her description box of her vlog, she's also got a timestamp so you can jump straight to that bit about the um, the granny square construction. So I will include that too. And big thanks to Shell for that. Um, I've got some bright orange yarn today. I'm going to be joining my squares with this and I am going to use a brand new joining method for my squares. I've never done this before. So you're going to see me try this today because I want to, to lean into that Halloween patchy scarecrowy kind of um, odd look. And I really want the join of my squares to be obvious. So I'm going to use a very contrasting color. So one, you'll be able to see what I'm doing very clearly. And two, it's going to be a really obvious join. So that's my bright orange yarn for that. And um, I'm going to quickly sketch you a layout of how this would look laid flat. So I've got my scissors. I probably won't need my hook today, but I do have my yarn needle. Um, this is panel one panel two, those are my two front panels and I've got them kind of pinned together. And this is the back panel. You're looking at the right side of my back panel, which is nine squares. So this is gonna be the back of my cardigan and I will be joining all that together along with the front panel sleeves. And this, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna turn the page here. So I can sort of see my layout. It's gonna look something like, let me get my, Um, all right, sip of water and then a few thank yous. <laughs> it's kind of a busy, busy weekend, everybody. So forgive me for, I've got to catch up, get my brain back in gear here. <laughs> I hope you all had a good weekend. 
Well, we have a gifted membership from Nico before we even started the stream. Yes, thank so you, big Nico. Thank you. And we Paula also had won a that. Membership milestone from Jessica, Jessica Rabbit. Rabbit and Vima. And so Jessica Rabbit, I saw hers earlier. She says she's still playing Palia, which is the new cozy multi uh, multiplayer online or massive multiplayer online game, which I still haven't yet tried. There are way too many good games coming out this time of year, um, but I'm glad to hear that you're really enjoying it because that gets me excited. Vima says, hi, Jada. I can understand all the process of making the Granny Square cardigan made may make them too. Love you, Jada. Thank you, Vima. Vima and I were chit-chatting today, too. Vima just finished an absolutely gorgeous crochet dress. Um, everybody is just so darn talented in this community. It just boggles me. Okay, so let's talk about the layout of the cardigan. I'm going to, once again, I'm going to show you like a cardigan layout and a sweater layout, depending on which one you're making. So this is going to be the cardigan layout over here. And I'm just going to quickly sketch it out for you. So this is the back. Each one of these little cubes represents a granny square. This is front panel one. This is front panel two. So there is a seam here and here where, they, where the back connects to the front. This is going to be my neck opening right here. And of course, this is going to be the opening down the front. And I will be adding trim to the inside of this and around the neck so that I can close one side over the other and button it. And if I were adding sleeves, it would look something like this. So let's say I was doing, well, I won't show the other one, but this is what it would look like on both sides. I'll just sketch this in here for the sake of argument. So it runs off screen, but let's say this is a long sleeve. There are six squares. This would be the back. This would be the front. And then there would be, it would be joined underneath, but you can seam it across the side. So the whole thing laid flat, back, front panels, open sleeves. So that's what the cardigan looks like. And then as you can probably imagine, the sweater version looks like this. Now you can use as many granny squares as you need. Um, in Shell's uh, video, you'll see that she's got extra panels of granny squares. Um, you can put in as many granny squares as you need. They can be different sizes, depending on what you want or what you're looking for. Let's say this is just a short sleeve cardigan, or I should say a sweater. So the same construction, sweater sleeves go on the same way. This would be the front nine, this would be the back nine, and right here would be a non-stitched area. So this is all stitched across here. This is all stitched across here. Of course, the whole thing is just showing you laid flat, but you would not stitch in here if that would be your neck hole. So something to keep in mind if you're making the sweater version, if you're using six inch squares, that gives you an opening of roughly 12 inches circumference. You wanna make sure that that kind of an opening can fit over your head. If it doesn't, you might wanna consider um, leaving it a little bit open into the sides of the square. So you don't actually have to seam like all the way along a square. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So for example, let's say this is your seam. This is say maybe the front top of the front panel. That's the top of the back panel. You're sewing across these two things. Well, that only leaves you, let's say, with a little neck opening that's about 12 inches. So that's not enough to get over most people's heads. So you would only sew maybe to about here and here on both sides of that seam. And then that would leave you with a much larger opening, assuming that all of these were stitched in. So while you are stitching together your layout, Make sure that you're trying it on. You're keeping in mind things like, I gotta get this over my head if you're making the sweater. If you're making the cardigan, this doesn't matter as much because you're never gonna pull it over your head. You're just gonna be sort of throwing it on and that's gonna sit around your neck. And you will always have this opening in the front. So you don't have to button it all the way up to your throat. You can like let it hang open. You can only button up so high. Uh, but this is a much more flexible size or shape in here than this would be if this is your sweater. So keep that in mind if you're making the sweater version. You don't want to accidentally give yourself um, a too small a space to pull it over your head. 
So that's an important thing. That's probably the most important thing. Everything else is very manageable or flexible. Um, you can sort of uh, be easy with the stitching. You can have shorter sleeves, longer sleeves. You can add to the panels. You can add to the bottom. You can add, add more trim to the bottom of your sleeves. Um, but this stitching, you want to get that right the first time around. You don't want to have to take out stitching. So make sure that you leave yourself a big enough opening if you're making the sweater for your head. And I will switch back to my other sketch here. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate a new method for joining granny squares. This particular method is intentionally visible. So I'm making an intentionally visible join and it's a sewing uh, stitch. There are so many ways you can join your granny squares together. So you can join your granny squares together like you would if you were making a blanket. So you can sew them together or you can crochet them together. Things to keep in mind. If you're sewing, so you're using your yarn needle and a length of yarn, sewing stitches typically take up much less yarn for that join method than crocheting. Slip stitching is the smallest footprint of crochet join. It takes up the least amount of crochet yarn. Single crochet takes up about double the amount that the slip stitching does. So if you slip stitch or single crochet your edges together, you're going to get a little bit of a ridge, a ridge, which is fine. That could be a design choice that you make for your uh, sweater. It looks the same that, as it would if you were making, like joining your squares in a blanket. So that, that edge can be ridged. It can be made with the same color so it doesn't show up as much, but there is still that kind of neat textured effect. And of course, slip stitching and single crocheting is relatively quick. And if you're better at crocheting than you are sewing or you just prefer crochet over sewing then you might want to opt for the single crochet or the slip stitching method which is perfectly fine but just keep in mind it's going to use a little bit more yarn and it's going to create a ridge there are a million sewing options uh, i recommend the whip stitch the ladder stitch we have uh, tutorials for all of those and today i'm going to demonstrate i hope <laughs> the cross stitch so if you do any kind of cross stitching um, this is exactly that, and I really want a very obvious join. I want to create that cartoon-looking kind of crossed stitch that you might see on, like, a cartoon scarecrow or any kind of um, uh, sort of patchy kind of drawing. So I'm going to opt for the cross stitch, which I feel will also still be a nice firm join but will be nice and visible. So I'm gonna use this crazy bright orange yarn that I have here. And I'm going to cut myself a length that goes at least twice the length of a full seam going up all three rows of my, so I'm gonna cut it maybe three times that amount, hoping that, you know what, maybe I'll do four. Just hoping that it's enough because I don't really like to have to, 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 to knot in more yarn as I'm sewing. And rather than sew two squares together and then another one onto that and then do each row individually, I'm going to just go all the way up an entire row by leaving my layout pinned together and flat. <laughs> so here I go. I'm going to pull this up a little bit so you can see the bottom. There we go. I'm going to start over here on this side and I am not going to knot my yarn because I'm going to knot my yarn after the fact because I'm going to go all the way up and then come all the way down again. So here we go. I'm going to bring my yarn in at the bottom corner. I'm going to leave a little tail out to the bottom. I've got all kinds of happy noises going on here. Oh, that reminds me. Um, speaking of which, we're having a little flash sale in our Etsy shop. Our granny squares are on sale today, 25% off, and that sale is for today and tomorrow. So if you're here during the live stream, it's kind of like a, a little um, lucky, lucky, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's, like, it's like insider knowledge. <laughs> so it's a sale for today and tomorrow. It's all of our granny squares, but uh, I'm using the classic granny square. So if uh, that's the kind of granny square you wanna make your sweater out of, then that is uh, also included in that roundup. We've got 85 different granny square patterns in our shop. 
um, and they're all on sale, 25% off today and tomorrow. I will say that again a little later on, just in case anybody missed it. Um, Mr. and Stitches will include the link. And uh, there's a handful of them. He's got them up on the screen there. So if you want to check those out, uh, you're more than welcome to. Let's try this cross stitch method. So I'm going to leave my little tail out the back. I don't need a whole lot there, but enough to maybe weed bin later. So there's a, I don't know, maybe 10 centimeters or so, a little less than that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip, instead of going directly across to the other chain two corner space, I'm actually going to skip up about three stitches. So if I include this chain in the corner space as stitch number one, and then the first double crochet next to it as stitch number two, I'm looking for stitch number three, which is the double crochet next to that, because I want to make big, obvious crosses. So like I said, this is completely trial and error here. I haven't done this before, but in my brain, I liked the way it looked. So I'm going to skip, I'm going to go to every other, um, every other stitch. So one, skip one, and then into that stitch. And I'm doing this all flat and I'll sort of, I'll, I'll cinch it together a little bit more in a minute. So I want to skip, I skipped this one and this one, and that's the one I use, so I skip the next one. So it's going to be the next space. So I'm going to go in through the next space. That's going to be how it works for me. So every other stitch, and I'm including chains which represent the spaces along the edge of my granny squares and the double crochets which make up the shells i'm going to run my needle through every other stitch so then i would skip this one and it's the middle stitch of the next shell on this side which means that it's the next space on this side now i don't know if this is going to be too wide but remember i'm going to come back down the other way so let me just get this together and I'm going to cinch it up. Now, will that be too much? Gosh, that's going to be cute. This is my intention. So I'll just quickly demonstrate this. See this? When I come back down from the top, I'm going to get this really cute cross look going, this X. And I want it to be really big and sort of extreme. So I think. I think every other stitch is going to be big enough. I don't want it to be too small because I think you'll miss kind of the concept of it. So it's the middle stitch of the shell and then this next space. So what I'm going to go for is evenly spaced but widely separated um, places to anchor my sewing yarn. I'm going to go all the way up through the top. What happened here? All the way up to the top of the how did I get this? How on earth did that get twisted? What happened here? What is this? What is this? <laughs> All right. Pause to remove previous stitching. How did I get that? How did I manage to knot that up? All right. There we go. Okay. Try that again. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sort of, oh golly, golly, what was that? Lisa, Lisa, thank you for picking up a couple of patterns at our Etsy shop. I'm gonna zip through this now so that you can start to sort of see the pattern emerging. So I'm going through every other stitch um, and I'm going between, so one, and then I would skip this, which means I go into the next one here. So it's every other stitch from side to side to side. So on one side, there's like um, five, it's every fifth stitch, if you were looking at just one side, but because I'm skipping every other stitch, but I'm switching sides every time I sew, it, that's sort of how it goes. So I hope I hope that makes sense. It'll look, it'll look, it'll make more sense when you can see it. <laughs> All right, so I've got, and I'm gonna just go right up through the next, um, I'm going to keep going right through the intersection of all my squares. So once I get, so that's those two, I'm going to pull these down and I'm going to keep going. 
So I'm treating the spaces as stitches because they're represented by a chain. And I'm going to, do I jump straight to that one? It's going to start to, because now I've got an abutment of my squares here, if, I, if this is considered a stitch, my corner, and this is considered a stitch, then technically the next one I would need to use is the first stitch in that shell. But I think it might look better if I just switch to this corner and then, yeah, that's going to look better. Just because seams can create a little bit of a, a question mark. I'm going to skip now. Now, so now it's every space on this one and every middle stitch on this one, and then it'll switch again. Up here, it'll be every middle stitch on this side and every space on that side. Um, and that's just because of the way it works out. So like, again, I say, I hope that makes kind of sense, but you'll start to see it as it comes together. So that creates a better cross, I think, jumping over that intersection. And then on my way back, I'm going to have it going the other way. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'm using this nice bright orange yarn for two reasons. One, it's easier to see, and two, it's going to make it's going to make this uh, look very um, Halloweeny. Did I get the right thing there? No, I think I I got the wrong stitch. No, I got the right one. That's the front one. Okay, that's this one then. So space and then middle stitch. All right. Sorry guys, I haven't had a chance to look at the chat a whole lot here. I've been, like I said, I'm literally, uh, I thought I would do this kind of in real time along with you guys today because um, I thought this would look really cute, but I haven't even tried it. Um, I wanted it to be kind of like first impressions for all of us here and already I think I like this and I think it's gonna it's gonna keep it's gonna be a firm enough join that I won't end up with any weird gapping so I have high hopes for this so let me just cinch this up a little bit more there we go Okay, so I'm at the next intersection. There goes one of my clips. I'll get you later. So I go through this space and now I'm gonna hop into the next corner space of the next adjacent square. So I'm switching back now. It'll be every space on this side and every middle shell stitch on this, on this, this side. Um, so back to where I kind of started. And Nico, Hi, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership. Thank you so much, Nico. And Mandy has won it. Congratulations, Mandy. Okay, so here we go. I want the middle stitch and then I want that space. I've never had a Halloween sweater before, which I am a little embarrassed about. You'd think I love, I love spooky stuff and I love the whole Halloween thing. So I'm kind of surprised that I've never had or made a spooky sweater before. And not that this is going to be overly spooky, but I think it's going to be, it's definitely going to have, it's got the, those nice Halloween kind of colors going. All right, and I want the third stitch up here. That's it. Now we're getting close to the top. So I the last stitch comes out the corner up here, and now I'm gonna turn around and go back. So I'm gonna hop right over into this corner up here and now, so let me just pull this out. I want to make sure that I have, so the top is going to be obvious. There's a nice stitch up here. And then I want to come back out this side, right? I think so. Or do I want to go? No, no, I don't. I want to come out the top. Let me come out, back out this. So Unstitching. <laughs> I, I cross across, across to the other corner, the adjacent corner space, 
on the second square, so I get a straight line across here. And now I want to reverse what I was doing. I'm going to come out through the middle stitch on this side. So my stitch starts opposite the stitch where the other side starts. So now I'm going to reverse what I was doing. So now this side will be every middle stitch and this will be every space and then it'll reverse for the next set and then reverse back for the next set. So now I go space and then the middle stitch here. Yes, this is going to work. I see. Let me get this whole set of squares done and I'll show you that lovely cross stitch, this, this fun patchy X pattern that I'm looking for. Oh, this is going to be cute. <laughs> and because I'm sewing back down in the other direction and I'm going through now every other space and stitch, I'm that gives me another opportunity to really cement those stitches in. So the seam is going to be pretty strong. It's not going to be gapy. It's not going to have holes in it. So through that corner and then through the other corner. Okay. All right, so there we go. I'm going to continue this all the way down and you can see I've got this really fun X happening. So now my seam looks like uh, like I, I'm kind of trying to sort of channeling a little bit of that scarecrow, um, you know, classic cartoony scarecrow kind of uh, obvious stitching together. I think this is look this is just going to look so cute. Okay, so let me continue down now. And I want to make sure that my stitches are tight, but not too tight. So now that one's going to go here. I definitely cut more yarn than I needed to sew with, so that's a good thing. It's always better to have more than not enough. And I want third. I'm going through middle stitch here and the space there. Middle stitch and space, middle stitch and space. Now luckily I'll be um, I'll be sewing the exact same pattern going from side to side. So I'm going to do the top down seams first and then I'm going to do the side to side and that will give me the opportunity to kind of have double the seam strength running through the intersections between squares. So that is good. Okay. So now I'm into the bottom ones. So I hop over here and I start. Yes, Nightmare Before Christmas. That's exactly right, Robin. That's kind of, I can't, what's her name? Sally? It's been so many years since I saw that that um, that movie. I think her name is Sally. She's kind of got that cute patchworky top. I, I, I don't remember much about that movie except that I remember that Sally was kind of sad, which I thought was she kind of had a neat character. Okay, I can go back and fix all that later. So I'm coming down to the bottom now. And another reason I was kind of excited to try this is that it's going to give me the opportunity to have only one knot. So instead of knotting my yarn at the bottom and then knotting it all the way at the top, I'm only going to, I get to knot these two ends together. And I think I want, I'm going to just run my needle so that I have the same kind of cross stitch that this, uh, I have a similar um, stitch that closes this one up here, like I had up at the top, just for a little bit of, of extra strength and also just to kind of make it match up at the top. Now, if you're not very neat at sewing 
and you are making a Halloween sweater, then this is a nice option for a couple of reasons. One, it's relatively easy. Two, it can be messy and crooked and, and weird because it's a Halloween sweater. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect. Let me just snip my sewing yarn here. I probably have enough to do my next seam with. I don't even have to cut more yarn yet. So I'm gonna sort of sew that, or I'm gonna knot that together. I'll do it even three times and then I will, I will weave this in later. Um, or I might even leave it I might even leave it, hmm, hmm. Do I weave in my tails or leave them out to give it more of a crazy, nah, you know what, I'll weave, I'll weave in my tails later or crochet over top of them, we'll see what happens. Um, I will be adding an edging, so this will end up getting, getting kind of covered by my edging probably. But there is the cross stitch seam. I really like how that looks. It is really fun and of course the orange on the purple looks very nice contrast. So I'm going to do my second top to bottom seam and I'm going to start, hmm, will I do it? Yeah, I'll start on the same side. So bottom corner, bring my yarn through, leave a, oops, leave a tail. You know what? It's probably faster just to stick that tail through that bottom corner. Yeah. So tail through the bottom corner. So the first, on the first side for this square, it'll be spaces and the first square on the second side, it'll be the middle stitch. Then for the middle, it switches, it becomes the middle stitch and the spaces, and then it switches again up here, it becomes the spaces and the middle stitch on the other side. So here we go. I should be able to do this a little quicker now that I know what I'm doing. And then I come back down in the opposite direction. So looking for the middle stitch, there it is. Middle stitch. This is, um, I've never seen a join like this either. Uh, I just caught Betty's comment there. I've never seen a join like this either, but I love cross stitch. So if any of you have ever done any cross stitching, um, this is all that is. It's just a cross stitch. And I thought it would look really fun on a, a kind of a Halloween, Apache Halloween sweater. Um, and I really wanted the contrast of the join yarn to stand out from the, the rich purple of the background of the granny square. So I think, I think I've achieved that. So this, um, for lack of a better title, this is just a cross stitch join. And I'm going to jump into this space and now this becomes the middle stitch here. And then I will get that one on the way back. All right, so I'll just tighten that up a little bit. So now it's this space and it's every middle stitch. This space and the next middle stitch. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to pull tightly if you're using this method. I'm just re recognizing that because it's a fairly widespread stitch anchor. Um, you can pull it a little tighter, even if it looks like it's kind of compressing your granny squares together, because probably some stitches are going to be a little looser than others, and it will all eventually work itself out. Uh, plus, if it looks a little awkward, that's okay, because we're kind of going for that weird, patchy look. So now this is spaces and this is the middle stitch. So there's the middle stitch there. And then I will come around, turn around and come back down the other direction. Middle stitch, next space. Middle stitch, next space. Welcome, welcome everybody. If you're just tuning in, thank you so much for joining us today. I am attempting to join my squares together using a very new stitch. I love it, I, I'm, I'm in, this is it. I really think this is fun. Okay, so now I do my cross at the top and now I switch. I start coming through the middle stitch on this side. So let me just pull that a little tighter. Middle stitch on this side and now it's the space and the middle stitch and the space, and the middle stitch, 
and the space and the middle stitch. And I'm, of course, when I'm using the stitch, I'm actually using the top, I'm going under the top two loops of the stitch. I'm not going between the double crochet stitches. I'm, I'm sort of sewing through the top of the stitch, just like I would if I was doing a regular join. And now I switch to that circle. So now it spaces on this side, middle stitch on this side. So is that my middle stitch? That's my middle stitch, okay. And I'm not using the, um, I'm not using the actual chain in the space. I'm just going right through the space. But again, I'm looking for that kind of wacky patchy look. So I want the middle stitch here, middle stitch and space and middle stitch and space. All right. And then I want this. So now I'm switching to this space on this side, middle stitch on this side. And I gotta make sure I get the middle stitch over here. That looks like it. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Space. Tuck that to the back. And that's the middle stitch there. Space and middle stitch. Space and middle stitch. And now that I've I've gone through uh, at least two sides, uh, I've done these two seams. These ones will be a lot easier to do, so I can probably take all my stitch clips off and get them out of the way, so they're not in the way while I'm sewing. Just shove those to the side. Oh, this is going to be so fun. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to just go through the bottom two spaces. Bottom two spaces once and then twice just to get that little cross at the bottom. And now I'm going to tie these two ends together. So I've got a nice unraveling. That seam, seam is not going to unravel. There we go. Now I might need more yarn, but I'm going to just going to start. Okay, so there we go. I've got the two top to bottom seams now complete on the back panel of my cardigan. And I have definitely achieved the look that I want. I want that, that very obvious stitching, cartoony almost seam. So this, for lack of a better title, is the cross stitch join method. It is a sewing method. It absolutely works if you are looking for kind of a wild wonky join. This would also work in uh, joining a blanket together because now I'm going to just spin it and I'm going to do the side to side uh, seams the same way and it's going to keep that it's going to keep the squares together rather nicely. So you could also use this on a blanket and look how fun that is. This would be really fun like on a children's blanket anywhere where you want to really um, make the join part of the overall design of the blanket. Like I think this is this is really fun. This is a really cute little thing. So all right, let me do the other side now. Um, everyone's looking for my feedback on your stitch. I have to give Jada's um, stitch a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Definitely. Um, everyone was mentioning, you know, all the classic cartoony Halloween things like uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, yes! Yeah! Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other one that you Sally else from mentioned? Sally from Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's like a, it's a very classic, exaggerated cartoon stitch. Perfect for Halloween. I think so. I, yeah. I think you know this this cartoon. Ten out of ten. I give it a ten out of ten. Thanks, sweetie. You're I'm welcome. Pulling a a little tail to the back here. I'm gonna weave my tails in later. I haven't even finished weaving in all the tails on my granny squares, but I don't really care once again, because this is sort of a quirky Halloween sweater. So if it's a little messier than a regular sweater, that's fine. But um, I might just decide to weave in all those little tails later. We shall see. So I'm gonna quickly sew up my other two seams in the back. 
So I jump to here and then I start going through. Everyone thought I had fallen asleep. <laughs> You were probably out sneaking a snack. I know you. I uh, I had to sneak to the snack section of the uh, the area. The snack area was calling my name. <laughs> Once you know what to look for, the sewing goes a little quicker. Now I switch to the middle stitch here. Lucy! Lucy has gifted a membership. Thank you, Lucy. And it looks like Robin has won it. Fantastic. Welcome back, Robin. I might get all the way to the top with this yarn and then I might have to... This is the middle and then the top. Oh, no, I'll just tie it in and keep going. And now I come back around at the top and now I'm doing spaces and middle stitch on this side. So there's my yarn. I'm going to tie in some more now and nothing fancy. I'll just make sure that the knot is to the back. So I'll make sure that it winds up on the inside of my sweater so I can sort of weave it in back there. <laughs> Ellen says a 10 out of 10 or an X out of X. <laughs> Love it. Old fashioned Roman numerals. That is smart. I like yes. that. <laughs> I'm still here, everyone. I just had to run off for a few seconds. Everyone thinks I'm sleeping. It is pretty cozy down here in the well, it, I have to you, say. You do like it down yeah, there. Yeah, I like it. I, I rolled in my television and my... Uh, <laughs> my old man lounge chair and that's it you might never see me again <laughs> old man lounge chair oh this is this is quirky oh i love it i love it i love it okay so i switch now that space is on this side and middle stitch on this side coming back down the other way Robin with a super chat. You guys are such a bright spot in my days. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. You guys are fantastic. I, Mr. and Stitches and I giggled all weekend long about the, the whole Boobies. booby cardigan thing. Boo-bee. Boo-bee. Cardi. And the booby cardi. And I'm going to be making Jada little. Jada's in full production of the booby cardi I'm, right now. I'm absolutely going to add little, um, uh, ghost and bee appliques to this. I just oh, think that's that is a must. so cute. So now I go through here. Now I did spaces on this side, so I need to do spaces and middle stitches on this side. Okay. Yeah, so the second seam, once you know what to look for, this really does move a lot faster. And to be fair, I feel like this is a very quick join. Um, I was explaining it for the first, what, 20 minutes or so, but now that I kind of know what I'm doing and I know what I'm looking for, I'm just flying along because you're not actually having to sew through every single set of stitches. I'm not crocheting. Um, so now it's this side and I want to come back up through here to make a cross stitch at the bottom. So I'm just going to hold on Did to um, I'm not sure if I missed a membership gifting from Lucy. Did you, I got it. Did you get it? I got it. But was, you I, could... uh, was I around for that? No, or... you were grabbing a snack. I oh, know you. Oh, man. Hold I on, heard you're rustling. I've, I... got a, I've got a little thank you animation for Lucy. Thank you again to Lucy. <laughs> did I miss any more? I don't think so. I don't think so. The, la the one before Lucy was Nico. I think I got that one. Nico. All right. Um, okay. This, ah, yes. Don't you guys, don't you love it when something just starts to work? <laughs> oh, this is so quirky. I love it. <laughs> I think this is so cute. I'm loving it. I will definitely be doing a blanket with this join down the road. I just feel like it is so fun. It is it is such a, a fun standout way to join squares together. 
it's like in, it's intentionally obvious, but it's still even. And it really brings it. It really brings this this uh, that contrast and that that it makes it interesting. I think I like that. I like adding interest to all of that purple framing. And it, and it's gonna pull because I'm using that orange. It's gonna pull the brighter colors out of the middle of the square. Ah, this is fun. Okay, one more seam to go, and then I will be moving on to my front panels. This is great. And I want the middle stitch. That's the middle stitch. Middle stitch, middle space. Uh, I'm going to end the poll that we had up before mm. we started. Yes. It's a very important poll. Very important poll. <laughs> Which side are you on? Team peanut butter, team butter and jam, team Nutella, or team marmalade? So 48% of you are a peanut butter crew, and then followed by butter and jam. I do love butter. Uh, we didn't include, is it, is it, okay, all of our Aussie friends there's who the, are there. There's that stuff from Australia Yeah, that mar marmalite? Ma mar marmite? 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 It's like some kind of marmalite? weird engine leftovers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually tried it, so uh, might have to. It's like ground up bay leaves and engine oil or something like that. Marmite. 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 Yeah. That's what it's called. I still have to try it. Yeah, we've never had it. it oh, thank you, Woo Catherine. Catherine has picked up a few patterns in our Etsy shop. And just a reminder, all of our 85 granny squares, including all the six inches ones that are good for, for granny square patterns like this, are all on sale, 25% off today. So thank you, thank you. I'm going, is that the middle stitch? I got the middle stitch. That's the space, and then the next stitch, and then the space, and then the next stitch. All right. We've got this space and then I go into this space and we switch so now it's the middle stitch over here and this space working flat um, if you're gonna do this sort of style of joining I find actually working flat and moving the, the squares around as opposed to holding the squares together is um, really a lot easier so now is that the middle one that I want yeah uh, just gives me a little more control, a little more flexibility uh, over my stitching. So I recommend that if you're going to give this a try. Okay, and then up through the top. And now we cross over and start our way back. So now I'm doing middle stitch on this side. And the space, so space, and then middle stitch. Do I want to use this one? I'll use that one. Space and middle stitch. Yeast extract. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. Veg, veggie night, veggie mite, veggie mite. It's yeast extract. Thank you, Krista. Oh, yeah. it's veggie mite, yeah. not marmite. Yeah. I mean, what? Is marmite something else? I still think. I still. Th yeah. Isn't. Isn't a marmite a little animal? I don't know. Veg is that a... <laughs> <laughs> marmite is the bay leaves and engine oil. Yeah, Veggie marmite is the bay leaves and engine oil. Is the yeast extract. Yeah, so, so it that's... would taste a bit like beer. Beer or bread beer or bread? something? It's like a beer bread on bread. Is that all it is? Or is there also some other flavor? Yeast extract. Never tried it. I know we can get it here, but I've, I've never given it a go. Can we, can we get it here? Yep, yep. I've never seen it. Yeah, I, I actually, I pointed it out to you uh, a little while ago when we were in the food store. I said, oh, holy cow, look, they have it. And you were like, yeah, pass. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember that. <laughs> I, I want to try it. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it. I think it. we should at least try We'll it. get a little bottle. We'll get like a little travel size bottle. A little we'll travel a, size. A and if we if we don't like it, we'll give it to the squirrels. Yeah, they'll eat it. 
watch them develop a taste for it and then they start coming i understand once you develop a taste for these things that's it like you have to have it so if we've got to be careful okay so there are two marmite is in england and vegemite is in australia okay there's also an animal called a marmot a marmot <laughs> yeah that's right i'm getting confused <laughs> Okay, did I go through the right space? I was stitching here. So it's, no, it should be stitches now. So let me redo that. So I'll come through here and I wanted to come out through here. That makes more sense. And now I am skipping to spaces here and middle stitches here. All right, on the home stretch. So space and stitch. Space and stitch, space and stitch, space and stitch, and space to finish, and then I will do one more little. Okay, everyone, I'm cross. going to get a glass of water, so I want everyone to behave in the chat. <laughs> Speaking of behave, everyone behave, be on your best behavior. Nico! Nico's just gifted another membership. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> Something tells me Nico is is really good at making making it look like she's on her best behavior, but like typically isn't. <laughs> Hen Wraith won it! Fantastic! Congratulations, Wraith! <laughs> okay, so that is the back panel all stitched together, and I'm kind of loving it. This feels very Sally, night be nightmare before Christmas ish. I really, I really love how that stands out. Um, I I enjoy this method because it lets you do an entire an entire seam, and supposed to just doing individual squares and joining as you go. You lay it out. You do the entire seam up one entire sort of edge between squares. Turn around and come all the way back down, and then you've got um, two tails to knot together, as opposed to having to put a knot right on your um, your blanket or your fabric um, and I really like how that looks so this is gonna block out nice and neatly it's got enough flexibility in it that um, it will allow my squares to kind of move together but it's also gonna keep those seams together look I can pick it up oh golly Catherine again thank you Catherine Catherine's picked up three more patterns thank you so much Yes, I can pick it up, I can hold it, and it doesn't want to come undone. So the cross stitch is an absolutely perfectly fine seam join for your granny squares, regardless of the project you're making. Gosh, that would look really cute in a bag too, wouldn't it? Hmm. This is going to work best in contrasting colors. So if you're using um, whatever you've joined all your squares together, it looks best if all of your squares are all bordered in the same color so that that cross stitch can really shine. Okay, so this is the back panel of my sweater. I'm gonna fold it up, put it aside, and I'm gonna do my two front panels now. So I'll put that to the side. So there's panel number one. I had these guys pinned together. Oh. So that's front facing and also front facing. So both sides are relatively identical and I'm only doing the seams between the squares. So I will part these. Now, these are separate panels. So I'm just gonna, got, I've got them kind of just both on the screen, but um, this is like the right side of the sweater. This is the left side of the sweater. So I only need to go up and back through one set of squares. So I'll put that to the side. And exactly the same thing. I'm gonna do every other stitch on bouncing back and forth between the two squares. There we go. I'm not using the actual um, chain stitch. I'm just going right through the whole space but I am using the top of the stitch when I get to the actual stitch. Okay, so that's it for that side. I'm gonna hop over, and now I do the middle stitch on that side. 
and the space. We'll stitch and space. We'll stitch and space. We'll stitch and space. Bottom space, pull it out, and then I will go up through here and down through here. And just, I just pull gently just to make sure that that is all even. That is so cute. Okay, and then I will tie that together. Uncle Steve with a super sticker. Thank you, Uncle Steve. What have we got here? I've got... <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's... And Maureen, thank you for picking up a pattern in our Etsy shop. It looks like Uncle Steve is serving me a coffee and I will take it. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right, so that is just a seam between squares because this panel is only one set of squares wide. So I've got three more seams to go. And then I'm going to do the shoulder seams. And I had a thought about the, I had a thought about the sleeves, which I will bring, I'll talk about in a second. So there we go. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I start in that corner and I jump to the middle stitch and then I stow it to the next space. When you're joining your squares together with this cross stitch method, make sure that the right sides of your squares are facing up while you're working on the surface because you can see it on the other side. So if you join them upside down by accident, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But when you're working with it facing up, this kind of just gives you more control over making sure that, that, that the stitches are lying in the right place. You see, it looks pretty much the same on the back. It's just maybe not as obvious um, as it is on the front. But uh, I feel like I, I like to see something coming together the way it's actually going to look when it's worn as I work on it. So I want to go into the stitch and then the space. Stitch and then the space. Tuck that to the back. All right, and then I cross over at the top and I do the reverse. Now it's the middle stitch on this side and the space on the other. Actually, I'll just finish this and then I'm going to do a little cross down here. Okay. This, you know what this reminds me? Did you, any of you ever have those sewing cards when you were a little kid? It was like a little, like really firm cardboard or even like a little thin wooden, wooden plate with like a little image painted on it with like holes and you had to sort of sew through the holes. Did any of you guys have those sewing, sewing cards, sewing? What were those things called? Anybody? Just knot that together. There we go. Wraith had those. All right, that is one panel. So I'll put that to the side. And now I'll do the other panel. Yes, there were dolls with clothes to sew on. Oh, Regina, oh, I think you had something even fancier than me. I, I seem to remember, oh, and you had some Casey that were made of plastic. I definitely had, mine were definitely made of wood, but that might like really, really thin, like balsam wood, but that might be because they were really old. Like, I think they may have been my mother's when she was little. They were really old. I, I, I used to play with them when I was visiting one of my great, great aunts. 
So like my great grandmother's sisters, they they had them at their place, and I would I would play with them when I was who knows how old they were. They might have been my grandmothers for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Still worked though. I loved them. I was really kind of like I, I really enjoyed them. I remember, and I never actually had any of my own. So your great aunt had sewing cards. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. They didn't really help me to sew those in Laurel. <laughs> So that's my middle stitch right there. And I can get rid of this. Looks like Dawn's having issues. Or she lost a ball of yarn. Ball of yarn down. That stinks. Stop the presses. Stop the press. I hate that. We I hate that. Lost a ball of yarn. I don't like. I don't Stop like everything. I don't like losing yarn. I don't like ruining yarn. So. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. Okay, cross and then come back down the other way. And it's the spaces on this side and the middle stitch on this side. Ah, uh, looked, Tanya looked them up. They're called lacing cards. Lacing. So I guess they were to um, help teach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were absolutely designed to help you learn how to how basically to stitch manage certain certain stitches. Yeah. How to how to manage your your yarn. How to practice different stitches. Yeah, like there of was course. overlocking. I'm sure they're and... still out there. The the newer version, probably plastic. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, plastic would be nice and light. Uh, not that balsam wood was not light. Thin wood is light too, though. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, lacing cards. I do like those. Those were so much fun. All right. One more little seam, and then I'm going to do my shoulders. All right. People dropping into the shop, people hanging out in the chat. This is great. So I just wanted to remind everyone in the chat, uh, but I didn't remember. Did you put all the squares, granny squares on sale? Every or just single the six one. Inch granny squares? Nope. All 85 of them. All of the granny square patterns. Yep. Okay. So, and that's today and tomorrow. That's today and tomorrow. 25% off. So yeah, if there's a... Uh any you were particularly fond of or you wanted to pick up, especially if you're going to make one of these sweaters. I recommend the six inch granny, but I mean, in all honesty, you could make sweaters out of any size squares. I just feel like the four to six inch variety are the best building blocks because they give you more, they give you six inches and four inch squares divide into typical measurements a little bit easier. And I like the six inch square because I like sweaters and cardigans that are a little bit bigger. So I err on the side of larger. And um, I think, you know, six inch squares typically fit into most measurements pretty easily. Like you're only ever going to be a little over by an inch or two, which is fine because it's better to have a larger cardigan or sweater than a smaller one. And if you're using a, the larger, the six inch square, you don't have to make as many. Um, which I also like because I love making granny squares, but if I actually have a project in mind, sometimes um, sometimes I, I just want to get to the end of it. Like I want to get the modular bit done, you know? <laughs> okay, so now it's spaces on this side and middle stitches on this side. Space and middle stitch. Space and middle Everyone stitch. here just jogged my memory. Now I remember those. I think I think we had them to play with in like like kindergarten, grade one, grade two. Oh yeah? In the classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. With that makes like sense. a shoelace. Yeah. You'd, yeah. You'd use a shoelace. And sometimes books had something like that. Yes. Do you remember? Yes. And then you would like shoelace and you would kind of create a little picture. Yes. Yeah. That's how I, I never got to play with any in school, but like I said, my great aunt we're had going, some. Uh, we're going into prehistoric times here. <laughs> yeah, we're going way back. <laughs> okay. And that is my second. Okay. So here we go. Quick check of the design here. So 
This is the design we're going for. Ignore the sleeves right now. I'm more concerned about the main body of the sweater, which is the vest part of the sweater. So I'm going to ignore the sleeves for now. But these are the two front panels. And if I was to lay it flat, again, ignoring the sleeves for now, there's my back nine put together and my two front panels put together. And now I need to sew these two little uh, seams at the shoulder. Um, and I'm not sure about the sleeves yet, but I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So, Steve, thank you. Steve has picked up a couple of patterns. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> so I'm gonna lay down my back panel. So this is the back panel. Now I know you can only see so much of it, so I'm just gonna have the, this is the edge of the back panel here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now both of my front panels are pretty much identical. I'm going to make sure they're all facing up. Everything is facing up, right sides facing. So now you can sort of see based on my drawing and layout, the, this is an, a side seam. So this would be my left shoulder seam. This would be my right shoulder seam. This is the neck. So back, front, left shoulder seam, right shoulder seam. This is the neck. So now I need to do that fun little join across here. So I'm just going to pin these together. <coughs> Excuse me. So that one is pinned together. I'm going to spin this sideways because I find it easier to work this little cross stitch going up and down as opposed to across. And that's now that's completely an individual thing. I just uh, I've got some mobility or some some twisting issues with my my wrist this week, so I'm finding it easier to just go up and down as opposed to kind of going from side to side. I'm going to cut myself some new yarn. This should be enough for both seams. Granny Blue, a member for 10 months. Thank you, Granny Blue, with a super, or I should say a membership milestone. Thank you for all that you do, she says. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. So another quick little X marks the spot. <laughs> style of stitching here. Middle stitch, then the space, middle stitch, then the space. Oops, I missed the space and went through the stitch instead. Let's fix that. I want to split my yarn through the space. There we go. So I'm going to just pull that kind of tight, not too tight, but just cinch it up a little bit. And now I switch over here and I reverse. I go through the middle stitch on this side and the space on this side. Oh man, this is fun. Okay, and then down through here, and just to finish it off, I do one little overlapping stitch at the bottom, or I should say through this, the two edges there. There we go. Knot these together. Hi, Bonnie. A member for 43 months. Thank you, Bonnie. Says, liking the join method. So am I. Thanks, Bonnie. I, I really like it. I feel like it's it's got all manner of kind of... It's doing a whole bunch of things for me. It's making a statement out of the join. It's allowing for a fun contrast in color so I can really work that Halloween-y orange into it. It's got kind of a fun, cartoony, patchy look to it. It's also, though, a very firm join. Like, those squares aren't going anywhere. Um, and it's uh, it's definitely playing into my overall theme. So I am really liking it. I'm going to stitch it from this side. Yes, it's dark purple, Fidelis. It's, um, it's, I don't know, I would say a, a real classic, rich, royal purple. 
the I I I love purple. Everybody heard me lamenting at the earlier this year that I I uh, never seem to be able to find purple. Uh, I I went on the um, the lens. Shell pointed out that Lens Mill was having a uh, a store <clears throat> sale for the long weekend last weekend or the weekend before, whenever we had the, the Labor Day weekend. And so uh, I I went on to check out their discontinued yarns because they were having a pretty good deal on those. And they had purple, it discontinued purple. And I thought to myself while I picked it up, gee, is this why I can't get purple anymore? Because they're just discontinuing purple colors all over the place. <laughs> Very happy to have some purple. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna come from the other side here. Middle stitch, then the space, middle stitch, then the space. Middle stitch, then the space, middle stitch, then the space. Give that a bit of a pull, cross over, and then it's the reverse. Middle stitch, then the space on the other side. Ah, this is so fun. <clears throat> All right, and then down through the side. Jada, we need your Etsy shop expertise here. Oh, why? What's going on? Do you know how someone who has an account can go and look up their purchase history? Yes. Um, you would click on you or your little avatar picture, and you would go to your purchases and receipts. So there's a little uh, underneath the, if you click on you or your little avatar picture, a little drop down menu shows up and purchases and receipts is one of the options. Um, I think there's also account settings in there. There's a few things on that little drop down menu, but you want purchases and receipts, click on receipts, the purchase and receipt line and your entire receipt, um, everything you've ever bought will show up in chronological order with the most recent purchase being at the top. Um, you might be able to resort, so there might be like a little option somewhere in there, a little miniature in in sort of min, a little mini drop down menu that allows you to resort. But basically, it's usually defaults to your most recent purchase first, and then they go down in chronological history from there. Um, and that is how you can see everything you've ever purchased. Every file, every digital file you've ever purchased on the Etsy platform is always available for re-download in that area. So if you're trying to find it again, you go into purchases and receipts, you just scroll down through all of your receipt history, find the one you're looking for, open it, open it back up. And somewhere in there, again, depending on your software, you should see that download or re-download button, but you can't access downloads through the Etsy app, regardless of whether you're on a tablet or a phone. This is the biggest hang up I have with Etsy. The app is really fun, but you can't actually download patterns through it or any of your files. So you actually have to log in through your internet browser. And there was some kind of an update recently, a bunch of us ran into it, where you are, you know, oh, I can't open, I can't, I have to open up Etsy on my phone or tablet by going through the internet browser. And then it would kick you right back to the Etsy app. So you have to make sure it doesn't do that. If it wants to kick you back to the Etsy app, you have to log out of the Etsy app, which will stop it from doing that. And then you can log in through your internet browser, download your files to your tablet or your phone or whatever, and then you can log back into your Etsy app later. So that's the workaround. I don't know if that was just a temporary glitch or if that's a, a new thing or what, but uh, that is how we fix it. All right, let me just move some stuff. I gotta put all my little stitch markers away, get them out of the way. Uh, maybe I'll put a few here just in case. Okay, so this guy's gonna go there, I'll get my scissors. All right, so here we go. Again, I'm not worried about weaving in tails right now. I'll do that later. I've got my back panel now attached to my two side panels. I will be crocheting edging all the way up the inside of the front because I want to have, this is the front of my, you know what, I'll just lay it down here. So now I've got basically the rough outline of a granny square, sort of a boxy vest happening. Uh, I haven't got my sleeves on and I haven't stitched up my side seams, which Will I do that now? Let's talk about the, the sleeves here in a second. I will be including, um, I will be working, cro I will be working uh, crochet off both sides, the front and the, and the left side of the panel. 
so that I can create an, an opening that overlaps. So I'm going to come out maybe like four or five, maybe even six rows on this side. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, mirror image off that side so that they kind of cross over each other so that I can put buttons on. Nico, thank you. I found it on Etsy. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat and loudly blaring that you found it on Etsy Eco. <laughs> so you found it? Okay, I'm good. I'm glad. I'm, was it Nico that was asking? Yes, it was Nico. I knew that we could uh, see purchase history and I just figured we would just uh, snapshot that. But then I thought, no, wait a sec. If you have a registered account, personal your account, you should be able to see everything you've ever bought. Yes, yes, you can. Similar to um, like online um, gaming <laughs> Tammy! systems. Tammy, Tammy, thank you for picking up a couple patterns at the shop. <laughs> um, yes, um, uh, like I said, there's always a couple of workarounds, but if you are, if you do run into issues downloading your file, just, just ask us, just pop into the shop and send us a quick message and we can help you out. Um, cause we've got, we've got three different ways to get your pattern kind of always available. It's always also included in your receipt. So always check your email for your receipt and your email also has that link in it that lets you log in and download the pattern. But typically right after you make a purchase, you should also have a download option available immediately upon purchase. It should show up before you navigate away from that site. Uh, but everybody's software is a little bit different. So, um, okay, let's talk about sleeves. So here was my idea for the sleeve. I'm gonna just bring up half of my, so this, come here, sketchbook. All right, so this was my original thinking. I only have five of these crazy squares left. So I had earmarked four of them to be sleeves, like a short sleeve sweater, and one of them for a pocket. So I'm gonna actually have a pocket. Um, I might have more fun with pockets down the road, but we'll get to that. So the sleeves, I had four of these left, so I was thinking that basically I would make, I would start the sleeve on either side like this, so. Here's the back panel, here's the front side panel, and then this would be, you know, front of sleeve, back of sleeve. So that's the layout, again, based on this style of layout. So back panel, front panels, and then the sleeves. Now, if I had six of these squares, I would just do long sleeved sleeves with the granny squares, but I only have five left and I would need 12 to do both sleeves. So my original thinking was that I would just kind of start the sleeves and then crochet off the top of them. But I was awake in the middle of the night and I was having one of those 3 a.m. kind of creative moments. And I thought, what would it look like instead? If rather than starting the sleeve with the granny square up here, I actually worked the shell stitch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to make the sleeve and then finished it near the cuff with the granny squares. So basically, if you're looking at your arm, you've got just regular shell stitch coming all the way down. And then right at the end, you've got those big granny squares kind of just tying the whole wildness together. And then I would create like a little cuff off the bottom. What do you guys think of that? Uber girl says, Jada, you are Sally. I'd have to agree. I think you'd make a really good Sally for Halloween. Maybe I should try that. That yeah. would be fun. I, I won't, I'll, I'll I, I think wouldn't... you would fit that character well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna grab some water. Um, I would, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that, that sleeve idea. Make sure you pay the water toll. Uh-huh. It's not free around here, you know. I don't have any of this particular dark purple left, so my plan was to make most of my sleeves using this crazy orange, which of course ties in nicely with the joining. Um, but I think it would look kind of funky if the majority of the sleeve was this orange and then it was cuffed 
by the two granny squares at the bottom. Like that that kind of ties things I think that's in. a great idea. It's Halloween, so you want it to look a little funky. Yeah, I want it to look a little um, bit. Also, we have to add the B and the... We have to add the boobies. We have to add the boobies. Yeah, yeah that's true. So where are they, where are they going to go? Oh, well, I'm going to have to make... Though those are appliques, so they're going to go on later. So I want to get the base of the sweater made first before I start decorating it with pockets and appliques and things. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that putting appliques over top of the detailed granny square, they might not show up that well, right? Granny can over the detail. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because <laughs> detail uh, over detail, it'll be hard to see unless they're really big. Well, if I make two plain granny square pockets out of bright orange and then oh, okay. put the appliques on top of okay. them. That's a that would work. That or would on work the sleeves. Because well I was no, I was thinking more like pockets in the front. Uh oh. A pole. Everyone's screaming for a pole. <laughs> <laughs> um so I'm just gonna quickly sketch. You have to pay the pole toll. What Poles this are free like. around here, you know, just like the water. Jada, if you want a pole you have to pay for it. We have to with cookies. Uh, all right, so Oh my goodness, Eleanor! Eleanor has picked up a couple patterns at the Etsy shop. Thank you, Eleanor. I'm going to, um, I'm going to just sort of draw what I'm thinking this the sleeve would look like. So here we go again. Here is the, now will I draw it from the top down? Yeah, I will. So here's, here's the back panel. Oh no, we have a sold out pattern. Ding, 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 ding. Which one, which one? I will go take care uh, of that. Big thank you to Dawn for letting us know. Dawn, Sometimes thank you. Sometimes we lose track of that. So it's the Daisy Square. The Daisy Square. Okay. Um, let me just pop in and take care of that. I hope that now that I'm fiddling with the app, the app here at the Etsy shop, it's not going to, um, it's not going to s stop ding dinging on me. Oh because, yeah, sometimes it does that, doesn't it? But uh, we will. You know what? It's a giant experiment. You guys are always here for the. Uh, the experiments, let me see. If you do purchase a pattern and it, and the ding doesn't go off, let us know in the chat. Yes, please let us know. Um, okay, I think I got it. Let me just quickly. It's the daisy square. I got it, I got it. Um, I love that. that. That would be such a cute spring cardi. Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Um, let me just take a moment then. I was just thinking that pretty much any um, of the Fair Isle styles would also make a fabulous cardigan. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Uh, was it Marie? It was, wait, wait. No, oh, was it Crocus? I think it might have been Crocus. Said, why am I thinking that all of the samplers would be cool? I said, because it would look amazing. It would. Imagine how cool that would be. All those, plus, I mean, how many, I don't know how many samplers you guys have from your Fair Isle style work yet this year, but I've got over 50 at this point and gaining fast because I have a ton coming out for the fall of little extra ones um, because I can never settle. <laughs> um, so yes, a, a Fair Isle style uh, granny square cardigan would be amazing i think that would look so fun and i might actually have to turn a whole whack of my squares into that because that would be really neat so yes i will be doing that i think that's gonna happen okay while i'm in the shop i just want to say thank you to lisa Catherine, maureen steve tammy and eleanor again i think i got you all but just in case i didn't thank you thank you thank you for picking up some some squares at the shop and uh now i will be back to my layout this is going to be my sleeve idea this is the idea i had in the middle of the night this is what i've spent my entire life doing sketching stuff out and thinking about it and moving stuff around so as you know my original idea let's just make these look a little bit more like grannies also love just sort of playing with my markers and stuff so these are my grannies this is my layout so i've got my front panels down here got my back panel of nine back there and my original thinking was to do the two squares um, as the, the top of the sleeve. And then the rest of the sleeve would just be free, free kind of crochet. But I think now it might look cool if I do most of the, most of the sleeve in my little orange shell stitch, let's say. And then I finish it. So 
So these are my, these are my, pardon my extremely not to scale drawings here, everybody, but you get the idea. So these are my two grannies at the bottom. So I would have, picture this all folded in half. So once it's on you, um, this would be the front panel and the other front panel and there's the back and there's the back. So these are your grannies. <laughs> I'm gonna have a little ghost and a bee in there somewhere. And then you've got your orange sleeve. It terminates in a granny square. And then, um, oops, I'm mixing up my things here. I was probably gonna do some edging. I may not use brown, but this stands out well so you can see what I'm doing. So this is my edging. It's going to come off the front panels. I'm going to have some cute little buttons putting the whole thing together. I think I've got bright orange buttons. I'm going to have a little bit of a stand-up collar. I've got some more trim along the bottom. And then I would do the same thing. So I would, I would close in the sleeve with a little bit of a cuff in whatever trim the rest of it is. So the majority of the sleeve would be orange, but it would be, it would end with the granny square as opposed to starting with the granny square. And I think that would kind of tie the whole thing in a little bit better. That's my plan. So um, if you all like that, then I think that's what I'm going to do. So what we'll, what we'll do is we will start next um, stream with the sleeve build. Um, so we joined all the squares today together to turn it into the actual... Uh, the main build, so this is the back and the front panels put together. I'm going to leave off those granny squares instead, and I think I'm going to include them as cuffs because I think that would look kind of a lot more fun. And then next stream, um, I'm going to start building off, building my sleeve off the side. So based on my knowledge of, say, my measurements, I was thinking three granny squares on both sides or six granny squares total would be about 18 inches and that would get me most of the way down my arm and then I'd put a little cuff on at the end. Um, each of these squares is six inches, or yeah, six inches and it's five rows. But if I'm working the shell stitch back and forth and back and forth, then that 10 rows of regular shell stitch would equal one five row granny square. And if to make that make a little more sense, Nico, <laughs> thank you, Nico. Nico picked up a big pile of patterns. Thank you so much. Um, this granny squares are made from the center out. So the first four granny square or first four shells make the, the middle row. And then every row you get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you want to make straight granny square or great straight shell stitch to match a granny square in height or width, you use the same hook and the same yarn and that gets you the same shell size but you have to do twice as many rows going back and forth so look at it like row one row two row three row four row five row six row seven row eight row nine row ten so ten rows of straight back and forth granny shell stitch equals the same width or height as a five row granny square so back to my math if I knew that I needed six granny squares, three for the back, three for the front, to go all the way down my sleeve. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Katina, thank you so much. <clears throat> I think that said Katrina or Katina. Hang on, it's working. I don't want to mess with it, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so if I know that I need six granny squares for sleeve, three for the back, three for the front, then that, and each of these is a five row granny, then I would need 10 rows of straight granny shell stitch for each granny square. So that would be 10 rows to equal this square, 10 rows to equal this square, and then of course I'm gonna have an actual granny square at the end. So 20 rows of granny shell stitch, that's how long I need to work it, and to make it the same width, I would, I'm would i gonna build it directly off the sleeve. It would basically be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten, and how, at least ten shells wide, uh, but I'm going to think about, 
I'm going to think about, it might be better to stack the shell stitch as opposed to working it into the space. So by stacking it, I would build each shell directly out of the middle of the shell from the previous row. So you've got your three double crochets. So let's say these are the three double crochets of my shell. I would work the next double crochet right into the middle stitch of the previous shell. So I would stack my double crochets or stack my shell stitches as opposed to working them in the spaces. Might work up a little sampler, I will try a couple and then I will post pictures in the community tab and you guys can tell me what you think. Tanya has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Tanya. And it looks like Carrie has won it. Congratulations, Carrie. Um, so yeah, I'm going to build sleeves with crochet off the main part of the sweater next stream. Each sleeve will terminate in two of these granny squares at the end. And then I will end up taking the granny square and creating a little cuff. What is your recommendation if someone needs wider sleeve? What is my recommendation if what? A wider if, sleeve. If someone needs a wider sleeve. Oh, okay, that's no problem. So if you're going to leave a larger space, um, so it's the same It's the same thing. So if you're using granny, show, or granny squares, so let me just demonstrate here. So for example, I know that 12 inches, which is the total amount of space. So I've got a six inch side here and a six inch side here. That's 12 inches total, which means that the opening for my sleeve would be 12 inches all the way around. And I have a 10 inch arm circumference. So I know that that's big enough for me. But if you need more space, you just give yourself, you only start sewing up your side seams like at the, at the point where you want the size of your armhole to finish. So maybe you, you start your side seam down here, or maybe you start your side seams down here. Maybe you want really nice big bat wings or something. Um, you make the hole as big as you want. And then like measure, you would just sort of, let's say I'm going to start sewing at the one, two, three, right after the third shell down from the front and the back. So let's just open this up now. So now, you can't even see it, it's so nice and large. There's the two first grannies. So this is going to be say, um, the width of my armhole. But now I've added a couple of, of um, shells. Let's see, I put that in the wrong spot. So there's three more shells into the next square three more shells into this square on the front so that they're both the same. And that's where the seam is going to start. So now that gives me this really big armhole. Same thing. If you don't want to use granny squares, um, because the granny squares kind of aren't going to be big enough, then maybe you just want to work that shell stitch off the main sweater. It's a lot easier. Um, and you would just start the same thing. You would probably start it on this sleeve. Uh, with like a chain three and then work your shells aligned into every single shell all the way across. That gives you control over the size of your sleeve. You don't have to rely on the granny squares or, or nothing says that all of your granny squares have to be the same size. So if any of you made the 1970s granny square sweater along with me, um, you know, you could be using six inch squares for the main body of your square, of your sweater, I should say. And then you could use sleeve squares that are way bigger. So what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are eight, that's eight shells. So eight row grannies versus five row grannies. An eight row granny would fill this space, if you can kind of picture it coming off the side, so onto here. So you could use two or three eight row grannies, maybe four of them, two for the front, two for the back. You know, they're going to get as they're going to get longer as they get taller, but then you could still continue that granny square shape down the sleeve. They're just bigger grannies, which gives you a bigger sleeve opening. Um, but you still only need to make say four grannies and then you can still put in that edging to cuff it in at the bottom. So there's that option too. Um, you could also just say, Hey, I'm in, in for a penny in for a pound. You know, I'll just, I'll just leave my, my arm hole to be much, much bigger. 
and I will continue to use the six inch granny, but I'll just have two rows of the six, like two rows of six inches in the front and two rows of six inches in the back. So that's an option too. Can you double check for Dawn to make sure that Daisy Granny Square has refreshed? Yes, I will double check. It um, said and that it I did. I also want to mention to Dawn, if you don't see it, try refreshing your browser. Refresh the browser first, leave, Dawn. Uh, leave Etsy and then go back in. That might fix it. Nope, she just has to refresh the browser just page. Just hit yep. the refresh button. Just it hit looks the refresh like a button. Little, uh, a little circle with an arrow. Yes. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely refreshed, but um, you might have to refresh the page. So just uh, hit the little refresh button. Um, or if you're on a, a phone or tablet, I think you just pull down on the page and it refreshes the page. Um, and if that still doesn't work, let me know and I'll double check because it it was showing as refreshed on my end. Um, so yeah, that is how you can make larger sleeves. I also recommend playing with it. So when you get this part done, so that you've got the back panel and the front panel parts sort of put together, before you even stitch up your sleeves or your your your, your sweater sides, try it on. Let the front panels drape over your front. Make sure the back's on the back. Feel that neck out. Make sure that everything feels nice and comfortable and then decide from there what you think you might need. Maybe you want just a little bit more width going off to the left and to the right away from the center. What about just working a whole row of stitching all the way up the front and then and then across the side? Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> I think she found it. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> um, you could try that. There's no rules to this sweater or to this kind of cardigan. And like I said, if you're making it to look a little wild and patchy, then the crazier the better. So um, the first thing to do when you're making something like a granny square sweater is just eradicate from your brain any concerns that you are not following the rules, that you might make a mistake, that there's a strict succession of things to do. Really, all you wanna make sure you've done is take your measurements, figure on your fibers, you know, decide you have enough yarn, decide on the kind of style of granny you want. And while you're building it, you can let the design evolve under your hands as you build it. I, it wasn't until the middle of the night that I decided I wanted to do this cross stitch seam. I'd never, I've never even seen this before, but I love to sew and I love that scarecrow kind of cartoon thing. And I thought, oh, that would be so cute. How could I get that cross stitch look? And I thought, oh, well, I'll try it as a join. Turns out it works really well. So don't be afraid to try things because I mean, you're never sure what might work. And even if it doesn't, that's okay. You can take it out and try something else. Um, try it on as you go. Once you have a little bit of form, like the back is seamed to the front, now you've got something that'll actually sit on you. Stand in front of the mirror, use your pins or your clips and pin it, pin your seams, move your arms around, make sure that you've got you know a comfortable armhole. There is nothing I hate worse than a restrictive armhole. I can't stand that. So I like my armholes to be nice and big so that I can at least wear like a, a light sweater, a light shirt, uh, something underneath the sweater I'm making, or if it's a coat, same thing. I need to be able to put my sleeve through that, that, that armhole and not feel confined. Um, keep trying it on, make notes, and uh, don't be afraid to just try stuff. Um, so that's the main vest part of the Cardi done today. Talked a little bit about sleeves. In our next live stream, we will start building the sleeves. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do that thing. I'm gonna build my sleeve off the sleeve hole with my orange yarn, and it will terminate in my two granny squares. I think that's gonna look really neat. And we'll see how that looks when we get there. Thank you, Tanya. Tanya and her first ever super sticker. And it's a cup of coffee that says tired. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> That's a new tired. one. Tired. Need more. Um, so yeah, so far, this is going to be a fun little cardi. I'm really looking forward to wearing this. Uh, so if you guys have questions and I didn't get a chance to answer them, please don't be afraid to leave them in the comment section down below or save them up and you can ask them in our next live stream. Um, Mr. Insitches, did you see any that I may have missed? Um, I don't think so. I think I caught the few that uh, there were. Great. Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. I guess we can try and answer one or two quick ones in regards to the sweater. Yeah. Or we'll grab them next time. Or we can grab them next time. Um, once again, just a reminder, all 85 of our Granny Square patterns are 25% did... off in our Etsy shop today and tomorrow. So since you were here, you know about it. It's a little secret mini flash sale. Yeah, that's today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. Um, I just want to let you know that everyone said you are a fabulous teacher. Aw, thanks, You're doing guys. an amazing job um, letting <laughs> everyone trying. know how to do this. So that's probably why we don't have too many questions. Okay, well, that's great. We're just, like I said, we're going to try and do this as we go, uh, one little one little piece at a time together. Um, I love how this join method came out. So down the road, I will have a little quick fix video on how to do this so you can see it a little closer up. That will not be coming soon, but I will be doing one because I love this. I love how this looks, and I just feel like this has got so many fun applications uh, in the granny square joining world. So definitely look forward to that. I'm calling it the cross stitch for because it's basically the same method as cross stitching, which is kind of what gave me the idea. Love it. Love how it looks. Okay, guys, we will see you um, for the next crochet live along. Live crochet along. Um, if not next, if not before, then definitely next Monday. But we will see if we can't squeeze in another one before the Friday video. And yes, <laughs> there will be a Friday video this week. <laughs> Last week got away from us. Um, it's a real nice video. It's a, another tutorial. I, I hope a lot of you will uh, will enjoy it because it is um, very autumnal. Um, We're being yeah. requested for more gaming and crochet sessions. More gaming and crochet. Yeah, we do have to do. So it's been a while. Too. We should, we should, we'll try and set up another one. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, any questions you may have, feel free to leave them in the comment section or save them up for the next live stream. We will see you soon here. Stay safe. Stay crafty. Do not be afraid to just dive into a Granny Square sweater project. Just just take it one little step at a time and let it come together. And uh, you, you too will have something quirky and unique to wear. It is so much fun. It's also a great way to enter into the world of sweater making if you've never made a sweater before. Uh, building anything modularly is often a lot more easy than trying to make one entire piece to be to be a perfect fit. So yeah. Anything to add, Mr. Institutes? I, I would just like to thank everyone for uh, supporting our show. We really appreciate it. Keeps Absolutely. us moving along. It does. And um, Friday videos are usually around 11 a.m. Eastern. Yes. Um, and we might have a new schedule for live streams. We're not sure yet, but when we do, we will let everyone know. Yes. Uh, um, the, the, the Friday, we almost always, unless there's a serious issue or we're on vacation, both of which are rare events, uh, we almost also always have our, a Friday video. So... Uh, the video typically isn't a live stream. It's just a pre-recorded video. We've had a video up on Friday, every Friday, pretty much for the last decade. So um, our Friday video is like a standard thing. Uh, and like Mr. Insitcher says, we're probably going to switch up our live stream uh, schedule a little bit as we head into the fall. Um, we're not entirely sure yet, though. So far, this has been working out pretty nicely for us based on our, our, our schedule and whatnot. Um, but we will take into account sort of how easy it is for everybody to catch us on a Monday at a particular time. And uh, we'll do our best to, to work with everybody else's schedule too. Um, all right, that's enough chit chat. We will see you guys soon. Stay safe, stay crafty, have a great week. And um, don't forget the little sale. If you know anybody who might be interested, feel free to mention it to them. It's today and tomorrow only. So <laughs> flash sale. Thanks guys.